ideas come into your mind and go out. A lot of times I'm doing things with, involved with, with teaching where I get ideas about how to, how to take care of a test or how to present a topic or things of this type. But I find it's difficult to set my mind and say, I'm going to think about this the whole time I run. It's more the kind of a thing that I maybe have that idea and it comes in my mind and maybe it'll come in my mind four or five more times during that hour or so I'm running. But usually I can't just say I'm going to think about this the whole time because something about running tends to kind of take your mind, makes your mind kind of relax too much to stay real tight on some subject. Good evening and welcome to At Issue. I'm Twyla Young. And I'm Donnie Harris. The Boston Marathon, the granddaddy of long distance races in this country, was run today. So it seems appropriate to spend a little time talking about running in general and why it's gaining so rapidly in popularity as a form of recreation and exercise. Later this month, the Drake Marathon will be run. And following that, we'll bring you an in-depth report on it. We'll follow a few of the participants through their training program and through the actual race. All that in three weeks. But for now, we'd like to talk about running in general. Why runners run, what they get out of it, what effect it has on them and their families, and on those of us who don't run. Runners are sprouting everywhere, and to the casual observer, it might seem that anyone, any age, could run. We ask that of Dick Seagraves, a biochemist, a runner, and editor of a newsletter for a running club based in Ames. You consider jogging as something that is for everyone? Or oh, everyone? absolutely, yeah. I think that's one of the, uh, the big advantages, is that, that people of all, both sexes and all ages, can, can uh, do it. Uh, at very low cost and you know without any degree of organization or scheduling and they can they can enjoy it uh, they can get so they can enjoy it pretty quickly yeah I, th I definitely think it's for everyone we, we just in our club uh, we have people of all ages and degrees of health you know we have people that that had serious heart attacks and took up running at, at advanced ages and now routinely run uh, you know six or eight miles a day and really enjoy it you're totally free and unconstrained. Uh, you can do things at your own pace, in your own time, in your own style, but you have this tremendous feeling of, of physical and intellectual freedom that you don't get anywhere else, especially in a fairly complex society or fairly complex job uh, where you have telephones and wallets and credit cards and driver's licenses and car keys and, and and schedules to worry about. When you get out on the road with your shorts and your shoes on, you have this, this tremendous unfettered feeling that, uh, that you just can't get in most other activities. You don't have to worry about the, someone else coming to use the cart, or you don't have to worry about losing your balls, or you don't have to worry about how much it's costing you. And uh, you get tremendous release of uh, you know, these type of uh, mental and physical constraints that most other sports and most other activities have. And I think that's what p people find that uh, to be very uplifting. The reasons people get started, I suppose, are, are larger in number. Uh, maybe they just want to try it or they want to uh, uh, feel some need to improve themselves physically or, or maybe they're just pressured into it by their friends. Uh, but I think the reason people keep it up uh, is that they start reaping these, these uh, benefits. Runners are an enthusiastic lot, and those who stick with it, those who get over the first rough spots, say there's nothing like it. Listen, for instance, to Ken Kopetsky, a mathematics professor who's been running for 10 years. What's the first word that comes to your mind when I say what's so terrific about running? I guess, no, I, I, guess, I, was, I guess everything maybe is the word that comes to mind. There's just lots of aspects I like about running. It's, I like the social aspects. I like the fact of being in physical condition. I like the fact I'm outside. I like the people I associate with are in the running. I like the fact that it's carried over my other parts of my life, my diet, and uh, the fact that less alcohol, I have, don't have much to do with alcohol or smoking anymore. And uh, well, those so I think, I think the word everything might be coming to mind. Were those things that you were, you indulged in prior to, to running? Not to a great extent, but, but more than I do now. Now those things, if you're running, you just, they just, 
you realize that your body is kind of finely tuned and those things don't have a place. And so most of the runners I know just don't indulge in those things very heavily. Now, after hearing that it's easy and that anyone can do it and it doesn't cost much, we're going to tell you that there are several things you need to think about before you run, some precautions you ought to take, and that you'll have to buy some expensive shoes. Instead of trying to save money and get a general purpose shoe that you can use for playing tennis and, and other things and, and wearing in the yard, uh, you should uh, get a shoe that's made just for running. The disadvantage of that is it's not good for anything else. A lot of people take it up and uh, uh, start off in bad equipment and then get discouraged because they start murdering their feet. Uh, two or three years ago, that was a big problem. It was hard to get good running shoes, but it's no longer hard. Uh, there are plenty of places in every town now that, that, that have really good shoes. What's the one most important thing that you think I, should, I would need to know before I'd start running? Oh, that's kind of a hard question. I, right now, I think I tend to say start off with a good pair of shoes. That's probably the most important thing is to have a, have a good pair of shoes because feet problems cause most of the problems that you have. And if you've got good shoes with cushion and good arch, this will solve a lot of the physical problems that you might have otherwise, from sore legs to, to sore back to various other defects. There seem to be a couple of things that most people agree with. One is that you probably, if you're over, say, 30, uh, you probably ought to get a physical uh, exam uh, just to make sure you don't have some hidden problem that, that uh, you didn't know about or that you're, and make sure your heart is, is in good shape. Although the medical profession is still learning about running as a, and still learning about exercise, it's probably good to get a good, you know, first checkup. I imagine if you have some known health problem uh, that you might have that investigated. But on the other hand, I think most doctors tend to be too cautious on these kinds of things. I think lots of doctors tend to, to say, because you've got this, don't do it. And so many times I've talked to runners who their doctors have told them, you probably shouldn't be running with this thing you have. And people have not only continued to run, but they have solved that problem many times by their running. So normally I would say just about anybody who wants can run. Claudetta Wright averages about eight miles a day, and she says there's several things a beginning runner needs to keep in mind. Um, depending on your age, a lot of specialists recommend that before you start running, you check with your physician to make sure that there are no problems in your, you know, starting a running program. Um, so I'd say check with your doctor first. Sometimes I think that people who want to, who are going into running, you know, for the purpose of losing weight, I think they may be sort of deceived. I, you lose weight by not by eating less food, eating more of the right kinds of foods and less junk food, as they call it. Mm -hmm. um, so I think sometimes it's better for people to first get on a weight reduction program and then try and, and uh, add a, an exercise program to that. I'd say a good word is, is gradual. Uh, sometimes, uh, when I first started, I started running nine laps in state gym, which is three-quarter mile and would die immediately after finishing that ninth lap. So it's, it's a matter of, um, of, you know, taking it depending on how you feel. And someday it'll just happen that you can, you can add two or three miles onto your distance. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it sort of comes in, in spurts. You know, you, you'll get to one level and stay there for a while, and then you can move on to something else. And I'd also, it's, I also say that it's, it's important to, um, to realize that, you know, your distance is, is relative to someone else's that is relative to someone else's. So, you know, people who run long distance, you know, like I'm impressed with people who can go out and run a marathon, you know, 26.2 miles or whatever it is. I'm really impressed with those people, but I don't think that's where I am right now. And I think it's a matter of people being in tune to what they think they're capable of at, at a given time. But, you know, be prepared to, to uh, advance, you know, in, in their distance and speed. Okay, I've got my shoes and my running shorts. What, what do I have to keep in mind next? I mean, before, I, and I've had a physical. What, what's the next thing that one must consider? I think it's really important to develop, to develop a regular routine uh, and learn to run on those days when you don't feel like running and to uh, get yourself over that initial period uh, 
where you learn to differentiate between pain and injury, as my colleagues say, and uh, you learn to recognize uh, uh, your own, you, le you get to know your body. I think to, to do that, you have to develop a fairly regular program. It helps enormously if you can find other people to do it with that are at the same level you are, or maybe just a little bit ahead of you. And uh, I think that's important, to start a regular program and uh, run on those days that you don't feel much like doing it, because you'll, you'll get rewards for that in the long run. So you're ready to run with a promise of rewards. What are those rewards? Why, in other words, do runners run? We'll talk about that, and we'll take a look at the social side of running, at some of the rewards that retailers are reaping from the running rage. All that when we return. The leisure wear departments in clothing stores across the country have made their contributions to the popularity of running by giving us the jogging look. If clothes make the man, maybe shorts make the jogger. Because of the vast selection in the jogging look, a runner could coordinate a jogging set for each day of the week. And should the day be exceptionally warm and our jogger decides to swim rather than take to the jogging track, the jogging style swimsuit might make her feel right at home. You may not be surprised to find that our typical everyday jogger is not biting into this new fashion craze. Those runners you see on the street every afternoon are more likely to be wearing old gym shorts and a faded t-shirt. Get-ups like these color-coordinated satin running outfits would probably show up at the local disco instead of some sweaty gym. But the fashion conscious have seen to it that these coordinated tops and jackets come in every flavor imaginable. Now, if the selection in this newfangled style remains plentiful, one could safely guess that by summer, most everyone but the joggers themselves will be sporting the jogging look. For all the fad and fun, though, it is a fact that a lot of people who start to run quit after a few days or weeks. Most quit because running caused some problem in their lives, a physical problem, a time problem, or something else that makes running seem to be at odds with the rest of their lives. What's the toughest thing you had to face when you first started running, the toughest problem you had to overcome? I guess I'd answer that, the making time to run, to, to take some of the other things out of my life that I used to kind of do. For example, like taking, taking time out to eat lunch, sit down and eat lunch uh, regularly. Now I usually take a, carry a lunch to school and need to be behind my desk because I read my mail and so on. But if you're going to run for an hour or so a day, then you've got to kind of give up some other things. You've got to leave out some TV or some of these other things that you would, would have done otherwise. Is that a common problem people face when, they, when they're wanting to schedule a good time to run? Is, is sort of sacrificing those other things that you usually do? I think so. I think a lot of the beginners I see who say, who say to me, geez, I'd like to run, and they run a day or two a week and then miss for several times. 
It's that they really haven't yet got it into their, they haven't got to the point where they've got it into their schedule and they know they're going to run when they get up in the morning, like I do. When I get up in the morning, I know sometime that day I'm going to run. And uh, it's in my mind most of the day that if something comes up, breaks the usual time, I know before the day's over, I'm going to get it in. Same way when I'm traveling with my family. They know I'm going to run sometime that day, and as we travel, we, we work it in my plans what I'm going to run. What's those bad things that I'm going to see before I reach the point oh, yeah. where this is so terrific that I look forward to oh, doing yeah. it every day? Uh, what, what, what kinds of things do you experience? Is it soreness? Yeah, at the beginning, uh, as I say, you can go through a, you go through, I think everybody goes through a discouraging period. Uh, although it, it, it's not as bad as it sounds. Yeah, you'll have uh, sore muscles and, and blisters and, and uh, you take showers a lot, <laughs> and uh, uh, I think uh, it's it's probably mentally discouraging as much as it is physically discouraging at the beginning, where uh, depending on how fast your your body is getting used to getting back to what it was supposed to be doing, uh, it, it it can get discouraging, but uh, and you see other people around you all the time that are whizzing by. And in Ames, of course, that's a lot of fun because they're 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 males and females, old and young, and and uh, it's a very leveling experience. And if you had a high opinion of your own ability, uh, as a lot of people do, uh, it may be difficult uh, to get over that period. But uh, that that varies with individuals. It's not a big deal. A lot of us uh, find out when our shoes get worn out. Uh, if, especially if we're running long distances a lot, if our shoes start to get worn out, uh, you can develop problems. Uh, there's an awful lot of being learned about this right now. The, I'd say the amount learned by podiatrists and, and other running type physicians uh, or physician type runners uh, in the last couple of years is really increasing very greatly. We have not done much work in the United States on exercise physiology compared to other countries, so I think we're still learning about that. It seems to be some general agreement building up that, uh, that if you do have problems, uh, they probably start at your feet. And so a lot is being learned about, about corrective things to put in people's shoes. There are, of course, some people with one leg shorter than the other and, and one foot bigger than the other. Most of us are kind of asymmetric. Uh, and it's difficult, one of the frustrating things, it's difficult to get medical advice uh, for runners. Runners are particularly, are, are usually on the average healthy and they don't like to clog up the medical health care delivery system by going to a doctor and saying, you know, what's wrong with me? After seven miles, I get a pain that won't quit. You know, the doctor is, is waiting to talk to sick people. He's not going <laughs> to want to spend his time with you. So we kind of read magazines and talk to each other and compare notes and, and things start to build up and, and that we exchange. That's one of the things we do in this newsletter. Uh, we try to exchange information about what other people have learned about, about that. And a magazine like Runner's World developed, uh, devotes three or four pages every month to letters from people who have, who have tried something that worked, you know, based on some, uh, on some uh, malady they were having. But by and large, if you take care of your feet and you don't overextend yourself uh, too much, uh, you should be fairly trouble-free. It doesn't bother, you know, people to talk and laugh, you know, and play I'm sometimes. Really <laughs> <when it's running. laughs> of course, not many times I'm, I'm, out, I'm out there almost at, in the point of tears. I'm so tired. Sometimes I really do get tired. Um, I think some of, the, some of the difficult things about running, especially outdoors, is it's a lot different running up a hill like North Dakota than it is, you know, yeah. running on a, on a level surface like the uh, outdoor track behind uh, State Gym. But, um, you know, it just takes a little endurance. I think in order to, to get into the habit, you have to um, set um, um, a standard for yourself. You, you can say, all this month or all this week, I'm going to run a certain distance. And the toughest thing to do is when, you, when your body is saying, stop, and your head saying, oh, but I got three more miles to go, or I've got three more laps to go. It's, that's the hardest part, to, to push yourself on, you know. I, and for people who, um, um, who are uh, middle-aged, you know, that kind of thing, and they're not sure, I would say, you know, don't push yourself until you hurt yourself. 
you know, but, but make sure you've got that drive. Don't give up just because it starts to hurt, because it's going to hurt some, and it takes a little point, a little while until you understand, you know, the various phases that your body goes through as you're running different kinds of distances. Mm -hmm. But I'd say just, you know, getting that determination up, and then, you know, and that, that involves making sure you have a special time that you're going to go and making that commitment to go and not letting other things get in your way. Did you have problems with that at all? Oh, I, yeah, sort of at first. Mm -hmm. But like I said, I think it's very addictive. Pretty soon, if you know, really? you're, you're so in the habit of going to the gym and going out running that if you don't go, you feel so guilty. <laughs> you know, it's like you've done something wrong oh, to yourself. No. And so, you know, it's really trying to find that time and make sure you, you be there. That's the hardest thing. Getting a runner to talk about running and why you or anyone ought to run and all the terrific things it'll do for you is relatively easy. Getting them to explain what it is about this thing that keeps them running is a little tougher. Actually, I've, I've always been a little athletically inclined, but uh, I guess a lot of it had to do with the fact I was finding hard, having a hard time finding people to play basketball with and things like that. So it, uh, it was mostly just the fact that it was something I could do on my own. Why have you kept it up this long? Oh, I fell in love with it, like I think a lot of people will and do. When you're asked specifically what is it you like about running, you name things like you like how it make, how it keeps your body fit and it's affecting your diet and you're not using alcohol and, and cigarettes and stuff like that. Those are things that you liked about it, but at the begin very beginning you said that you had fallen in love with it. What's, what's the difference between liking some very obvious physical advantages that it gets you? What is it about it that makes you fall in love with it? I guess that's not very easy to answer if, if you haven't experienced it. Uh, and, and I guess it's kind of hard. <laughs> your question's rather hard for me to answer. Yeah, I don't know why it is. Why, why on days I can get up just really looking forward to that run and really wanting to go out and run that day and and maybe seeing some of the guys I haven't run with for a while again, for a while. And then when I'm, and after I'm getting back from a long, hard run, just feeling good for having put out the effort. I don't know. It's, it's hard to explain. It's, it's a kind of an addiction. It's, oh, they, you've heard the word positive addiction referred to running. And I guess that's the kind of thing it is. It's got, I've already become addicted to it in a sense, and, and it's kind of hard to explain exactly why I like it so much. What do you think about the popularity of running? I mean, it's really coming over fast. More people are running than they were maybe two years ago. Do you think that's something that is going to stay, that's a lasting thing? Well, I think a lot of them will stay. I think a lot of the people will, if they go, go at it correctly, will uh, fall in love with it and they'll keep on running, yeah. I, I imagine the big surge will tend to go back a little bit, fall back some. But I think a great portion of people will stay with it, yes because it's, it's got a lot of the advantages the other things don't, that, that the money aspects and the having the facilities and so on, being in the right place, these things aren't necessary. And I think a lot, of, a lot of times other people give up on other things because of this. Like tennis, the tennis courts get too crowded and pretty soon people give up because of the hassle of finding a place to play, but running doesn't have this. I think uh, more people will, will start doing it. I think there'll be a There'll be a big increase in things like people running marathons, which will probably peak out and decrease, because that's the way a lot of things go, hula hoops and frisbees and every other thing. Uh, but I don't know. I think there'll be a lot of it's an activity that a lot of people uh, will get into. We, uh, there'll be problems that result, traffic problems that are propping up around the country, things like that. But. Uh, I don't know, I think it'll reach a, an interesting steady state. Just what do you think about when you're running? Oh, everything. My bills. <laughs> my bills and my problems. Hi. And um, oh, just things. Sometimes you don't think about anything. Depending on how tired you are, you ain't thinking at all. You're just moving. Okay. Do you almost forget even how or what you're doing, I mean, you're just running and, and you're oh, thinking yeah. about something. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's just an running. excellent time. It's time all by yourself. I run with people sometimes, but when, when, it, when you're by yourself, you can just, you know, let your mind wander and solve some problems while you're out there. Come up with some new ideas for something. So really? it's, you know, it's a really good time to have for yourself. Most of your runs, you've you got to enjoy. You're not going to be able to... You're not going to be able to run every day, I don't believe. Now, now, there's times when I go out and really push myself, usually about once a week, where I go out and really push hard on a run. But if you're going to run 80 to 100 miles a week, you're going to have to enjoy most of those runs or you're going to lose interest pretty soon. 
Why do you run such a long distance? How come? Two I think miles? I think it's habit forming, <laughs> and I think. Um, one of the good things is that you meet a lot of people who are into running. The more you're at the gym or wherever you are, you find that there are quite a few people who, do, who run, mm -hmm. uh, and especially in this area. And um, I think you sort of get inspired, you know, when you hear, when you think you're doing good to be running two miles and you hear somebody else is running four a day and you think, well, if they can do it, I can do it. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know, I think, I think some experts say that you need to run at least 30 minutes a day uh, to make it mm -hmm. worth your while. So if you can get to the point where you're doing that, then I think you're doing all right. So you don't really need to run a great distance. Some people do it because they like it. It's fun, especially this time of year. You can get out and watch the buds on the trees and flowers and everything. It's really, really nice. When you first start out, you have no idea about the, about the uh, I think, you, 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 unless you've done running in, in uh, college and maybe even if you have, you have no idea of the really wonderful equipment you have for running. Uh, running is a very natural human activity, and that's what we were designed to do a long, long time ago. And of course, that's what we did when we were kids. We never walked any place; we always ran. It's a perfectly natural state. So, and if you are uh, overweight or sedentary, or if you have a job that doesn't require much physical activity, it takes a while before you begin to realize that. Uh, and you just got to get yourself through that period. And uh, it may require some loss of weight, but that's probably good for you anyway. But, uh, uh, and the other thing, of course, that, that, that you begin to realize is that uh, you operate better through a longer period of the day if you get some exercise. It's easier to, it's easier to solve problems. It's easier to be patient. It's easier to, uh, to uh, uh, still be functioning, you know, after supper. Uh, than it is if uh, you've, ha you've led a pretty inactive day. And I think a lot of people find a lot of other benefits. You sleep better, and uh, uh, after you get through this initial period, at least, you feel better in the morning, and uh, you, it really changes people's lives. Do you think you'll ever stop running? Do you think there'll come a day when... I certainly hope not. The only way I can imagine is if I had some injury so bad that I just couldn't go on but I, I hope to run till the day I die. There is no way to tell yet whether running will become as permanent a fixture in our society as fast food restaurants and supermarkets, or whether it will fade away like the hula hoop. But for now, the boom is on. More and more people are running for more and more reasons. On May 8, we'll take an in-depth look at what for many runners is considered a pinnacle, the 26-mile marathon. So be sure to join us May 8 when Ad Issue will take you behind the scenes at the Drake Marathon. On May 1st, Ad Issue will take a look at the juvenile justice system in Iowa. And next week on Iowa Perspectives at this time, BIOS will take you to the Stephen State Forest for a look at the wild turkey population in Iowa. And that's Ad Issue for this evening. For Donnie and me, good night. <laughs>